Fitbit and Google just made a huge change to their whole app experience. The basis of this new experience will be an AI powered personal health coach built with Gemini. Now think of it as a fitness trainer, a sleep coach and a wellness advisor that lives in your Fitbit app and adapts to your data in real time or at least that's how they're selling it. Today, I'll walk you through what it actually does, how it works under the hood, who can use it, and where I see both the promise and the pitfalls. I'll split this video into two parts, sports and performance first, and then the health and sleep part. And because my channel generally focuses on data and data reliability, I'll also show you why Pixel watches in particular are a strong platform for this kind of AI coaching. Now, before we dive in, a quick reminder on data quality. Pixel watches have been consistently strong in my testing for both heart rate tracking during exercise and sleep staging. Now some non-Pixel Fitbits do do fine on the sleep stage tracking too, but the heart rate tracking actually varies more across the whole Fitbit lineup. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Starting with heart rate tracking, you can see right here an overview of the heart rate tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 4. And the red line indicates where the Pixel Watch 4 is doing relatively well compared to the competition. And I tested it for different exercises. The higher the red line, the better the performance. And overall, as you can see, it's doing pretty well. It's not the absolute best out there, but it's one of the top performers overall. So that's the heart rate tracking performance where both the Pixel Watch 3 and 4 are doing really well. But let's now move to the sleep stage tracking. How good are Pixel Watches at this? Well, you can see that in this overview right here. Fitbit recently updated their sleep stage tracking and the Pixel Watch 3 and 4 are also some of the top performers in that. So the further to the top right devices, the better is its sleep stage tracking in my testing. So overall, very solid performance in both the sleep stage tracking and the heart rate tracking. If you want the full testing and methodology side by side with all the overviews, I have a dedicated deep dive video on the Pixel Watch 4 linked up here. Now getting back to the AI coach, upon launch it's only available for adults, you have to have Fitbit Premium, you have to live in the US and it's only English speaking. It will launch the day after this video releases, so the 28th of October. It's Android only first with iOS support rolling out soon after, though I didn't get an exact date. There's no wait list or cap if you're eligible, but the features will arrive in waves. So it's an initial experience that will change over time. So if you started later than somebody else, your initial experience will be different. But of course, everybody will be getting all the updates. It's included as part of Fitbit Premium. So there's no separate upcharge for it, but it's also not free. An international expansion will come later, but again, I don't know why. And many devices are supported, but they do need to support metrics like readiness and cardio load. So that should basically include all Pixel watches, I think, and many of the new Fitbits. If I get any more information, I'll add it in the description below. But how does the app work at a high level? Well, you start with a five to 10 minute intake chat with the app, similar to how you would have an intake with the coach. You can either type it or use the keyboard mic. And this kind of AI coach then sets up your goals, learns what equipment you have and your preferences, and then it builds up a multi-plan week. After that, you can use this Ask Coach button anytime to get recommendations, explanations, and even visualizations of your data. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, under the hood, luckily, Google isn't just bolting on a chatbot on top of your dashboard. It actually uses Gemini to try and figure out which of the metrics matter for the question you're asking. It pulls out the right data. It does the computations and then crafts a response. Now, that's quite important because that's the difference between a generic advice and something that keeps reference of your exact training load and your sleep schedule over the last weeks. You can even ask it to make graphs of different metrics against one another and get a better feel also yourself for which metrics are correlating, which are not, and which are changing over time. Now let's start with discussing the fitness coaching in more detail and then we'll get to the health part. In terms of fitness, the coach builds a plan around your goals, your baseline, and the constraints you put in. If you say, for instance, I have a 25 pound dumbbell and some fitness bands, and I'm actually traveling at the moment, it can generate an upper body routine that fits your hotel room at the moment, but will also include your at home workouts later on when you get back. It then helps you set your targets and it adapts if 
you check in or if you say you're sore, injured or slammed at work. So it will then update your plan as it goes. Now, I think all of this means there are three cool or interesting parts to it. First of all, there are dynamic plans. So if your readiness is low or if you had a poor night's sleep, your weekly plan will adjust automatically. But of course, you can ask it to reverse it back. Second, it has context-aware workouts. It knows your recent cardio load, your preferred modalities, and the equipment you actually have at home or if you have the ability to go to the gym. And third, there's sort of real-time troubleshooting. You can ask, for instance, what's the difference between an RDL and a deadlift? Or you can ask it to build a 25-minute low-impact session specifically for your back. And it will try to reshape your day and include all of that in the plan. Now, I haven't been able to test it yet. I'll get access to the same moment you did. I just got a briefing on how it worked. So let's see how it actually works. And let's also now discuss some of the potential dangers of this. But before doing that, running this channel next to my full-time job as a scientist is neither easy or cheap. I buy most devices myself and normally my videos are edited by my editor Alex. If you wonder why this video is more poorly edited, Alex is now enjoying his holiday. Now, if you can and want to support the channel, you can become a channel member, for instance, which gives you early access to some of my videos. Or another way is to use one of my affiliate links in the description below. For instance, if you want to get yourself a Pixel Watch or an Apple Watch, but actually a very easy way of continuously supporting is by bookmarking my general Amazon affiliate link with command or control D after clicking it once and using that as your way to go to Amazon from now on. It doesn't cost you any extra and it continuously supports the channel, but no pressure only if you want to. Now, thanks so much for considering and let's get back to the potential dangers of this new AI system. I think number one is overreach. Any automated system can put you somewhat too hard or give you wrong progressions if the underlying assumptions are off. Google says they did implement some kind of safety framework to prevent it. They call this SHARP, so safety, helpful, accurate, relevant, and personalized. Now, luckily, this does include some kind of expert written guardrails, and they kept testing it to make sure that it stays within reasonable bounds. Now, the coach also uses your context to set conservative limits if you're more sedentary, and it updates recommendations when you report pain or fatigue. And it, of course, also reminds you to check in with a clinician if you have any medical issues. But be aware that what Google is launching now is still a preview, so it will change over time. And I treat sudden intensity jumps that are suggested with caution, especially when you're new to training or returning from an injury or if you're on medications that affect your heart rate. Now, second is that we know that LLMs can hallucinate. So these kind of large language models can make things up. Now, Google's approach is here to reduce that by having agents that actually fetch your metrics, run some kind of calculations in the background, and then ask Gemini to generate explanations on top of those real numbers. And as I said, there's also these expert implemented guardrails. Still, like any model, it has its limit. And if in doubt, I'd evaluate the responses with human experts. So always be careful if something smells off. And number three, I think that's really important is data quality. Now the coaching can only be as good as the data that it inputs. And this is luckily where Pixel watches tend to shine in my testing. They've been very strong in my heart rate accuracy test across a range of workouts, which makes the AI's intensity guidance more trustworthy. Now, some older Fitbit devices might have heart rate readings that are less accurate during high motion activities, which could lead to plans that are a bit off. If the code suggests a surprisingly intense shift that doesn't match how you feel, I'd sanity check it against your perceived exertion, and if possible, test your Fitbit against a chest strap for a few sessions to see how it's actually doing. Oh, and a quick note on those metrics. Fitbit's cardio load is presented as a weekly cardio load from now on instead of focusing on these kind of daily loads. And I think this feeds in in some way to your readiness and the adjustments to the plan. Now, in principle, that's a relatively solid concept. And I like that it emphasizes more the week to week progression and recovery balance. Now, of course, you still can look at the day to day things, but I do think it's good to look at trends and not just as single days as a focus. But let's now move on to part two, the health and the sleep. On the health and sleep side, the coach leads into Fitbit's new sleep stage tracking algorithm, which is pretty good. You can ask questions like, why did I wake up tired? And it will try to analyze your recent sleep duration, stages, awakenings, and late night activity to explain what likely happened. Of course, this will be highly speculative and I will be a bit careful to open interpret. 
You can also ask for a wind down routine, for instance, set a sleep goal or ask things like, am I getting enough REM sleep? And it will personalize the answers to your data. Now I'll get to the issues with some of this in a second, but let's start with two things I really like here. First of all, pattern detection and explanations. You can say, for instance, find patterns in my sleep and summarize this week, and it will generate relatively simple visualizations and point out trends like a longer sleep latency on weeknights or maybe some post-travel circadian drift and tie that back into your cardio load. Second, adaptive schedule. So for instance, if you had a hard training day, it might suggest adding like 30 minutes of sleep the next night, which is exactly the type of actionable advice I think is really useful. And it's also good that it would explain why it's suggested. But now the caveats or downsides. Sleep staging is good on Pixel watches and most Fitbits in my testing. But like all wearables, it's not exactly the scientific standard. It's not a clinical polysomnography. Sleep stage labels like REM sleep, deep sleep can still be off on a given night. So don't obsess over a single dip in deep sleep, for instance. It wasn't really clear to me if the codes actually understands that not all these metrics are equally reliable. For instance, resting heart rate is relatively reliable usually, while deep sleep minutes or REM sleep minutes are probably much more noisy. And on a day-to-day -day basis, I would trust those less than things like resting heart rate or heart rate variability. We'll have to see in practice if and how this actually works. Now also the classic scientific saying correlation doesn't mean causation is also true here. This means that if you see two things happening and correlating at the same time, it doesn't mean that one actually causes the other. For instance, if you see less deep sleep today and you feel tired, this might not mean that you're tired because you got less deep sleep. Maybe you actually just got less sleep overall, or maybe you did a very exhausting workout yesterday. I would say always be careful in over-interpreting your data. Now, as I understand it, the coach can also compare your metrics to your matching demographic group so you get some context. But I think here we need to be a bit careful. Averages of your demographic group might not really reflect you. And I think if comparison motivates you, great, you can use it. But if it stresses you out, just focus on your own trajectory week to week and trying to improve or stay on track and not focus too much on how others are doing. On the more general health questions, I also think that the coach can probably pretty reliably explain things like resting heart rate, heart rate variability or prediabetes in understandable language. And it can summarize your trends on demand. So that's probably pretty easy, but still it's not a medical device and it's not a substitute for a doctor or clinician. Now you'll see that the coach will remind you to talk to a healthcare professional for diagnosis, treatment or anything safety related. That's by design probably for your safety and also for Google's liability. Next, let's talk about privacy because that's also really important. The coach uses your data from the Fitbit app that you're already collecting, device metrics like your exercise, your sleep and your vitals. It also has your profile and your interactions with the coach or so the chatting you do with the coach. You can also choose to connect data collected by other apps via Health Connect on Android and soon also HealthKit on iOS. So things like your weight or your glucose levels could be factored in. Now, by default, luckily, your personal interactions with the AI aren't used to train the model. So your data is relatively safe from being seen by other people. If you do want to contribute your data to research to improve the system, there's an option to opt in. So you don't have to opt out, but you have to opt into the consent. Now, if you do decide to allow your data to train and optimize the model, data used for research is encrypted. It should be access controlled and de-identified. So it won't include information that directly identifies you. Though realize that there's always an option you could be de-identified because Google didn't think of a particular metric that could de-identify you. So just to conclude, the app itself is being built around coaching now. So instead of just showing you your data as before with some coaching built in, the coaching is now more on the forefront. The today view still lets you deep dive into your metric, but the experience is now trying to be more coach guided and give you weekly plans, for instance. Syncing, layout and data visualization should be improved. And yes, there should also be a dark mode now. Now I think more features like nap planning or nap inclusion are still on the roadmap. 
And there are features around stress, mental well-being, and cycle tracking that are also being developed. Now, as they explained it to us, you will be able to easily and quickly switch between this old view and the new AI-powered mode. Now, if you're in the US on Android and already paying for Fitbit Premium, I think the preview is just worth trying, especially if you're on a Pixel Watch where the heart rate and sleep inputs are pretty reliable. Just remember, it's a preview, expect some gaps, updates coming quickly and changing that view over time. And they also want you or would like you to give feedback. So if you want changes, you can suggest it and maybe it will happen. If you're on iOS or outside of the US, support is coming later and I'll update you when I have firm deadlines about this and also when I've tested it myself. I'm excited about the general direction here. I think this is important, giving people usable data that they understand with actionable advice. So that's coaching that's grounded in your actual data and numbers and not just generic tips. The big wins in a way here are the dynamic plans that account for your readiness, sleep aware training adjustments and data aware and driven explanations you can actually act on. So something actionable, that's really cool. The downside here is that you need to be on Fitbit Premium, so you need to pay for this experience and the risks are what you'd expect from any AI system in health, occasional inaccuracies and of course with updates of the underlying Gemini, who knows what things could go wrong or right in the future. Now, Google is using sort of expert guardrails, but I don't know exactly how these are implemented. And you should always still listen to common sense and your own body. Now, I think data is super cool and very useful, but it's imperfect. And you always need to combine it with your own subjective feelings and listen to the things your body is telling you as well. Now, if you want to go deeper into the sensor accuracy of the Pixel Watch 3 and 4, which is the backbone of all of this, check out my Pixel Watch 4 reliability review linked up here. And if you do try the preview coach, tell us in the comments below what it got right and also the issues you're having with it, because I'm really curious about your experience as well. Now, whether you're getting the Pixel Watch or the direct competitor, the Apple Watch, my favorite sleep improvement device, the HSleep Pod, or my favorite overall sports and health tracking device, the Whoop Strap or an Aura Ring or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something small as toilet paper. Use of one of my affiliate links down below again will be really appreciated. You can also become a YouTube member, which is like Patreon on YouTube and it gives you early access to some of my videos. Now, given that you watch this video, I think you will like this video on the Pixel Watch 4 or this video on Apple's new sleep score.